and welcome back to day four of the 10 days of video tutorials. I'm Linda, I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Australia and today I'm going to be focusing on dynamic embossing folders. Uh, currently we have this one which is the cable knit embossing folder. When you get this folder you'll understand straight away why it's different. It's much much thicker than the other um, embossing folders. In fact it's so stiff it won't even, um, sit, it sits open like this just um, when it's resting and uh, it does go through your um, Big Shot a little differently to your other embossing folders. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. The whole point of these dynamic embossing folders is it really gives you a much deeper impression which means that it looks almost 3D and that is that is what it's meant to do. So it's going to give you a lovely 3D almost you know really realistic light. It really does look like it's been knitted when you pop it on a card. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to use it. If you're looking for it, you'll find it in the holiday catalogue, this one here. And it's on page 13, um, down the bottom here, the Cable Knit Dynamic and Textured Impressions Embossing Folder. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, and they, are, they retail for slightly more than the, um, the traditional folders. And they're also uh, six by six, so they're a larger folder, which is great because you can put your paper either way, landscape or portrait, and it'll cover the entire car front for you. Um, this one is $17 Australian, so, um, so just to give you a little bit of information about that. Of course, if you're wanting to order one, just order through the online store. Um, on my blog, click the Shop Now button and that's where you'll go. Alright, so a couple of different ways to use it. First of all, it goes through your Big Shot differently. If you're using the platform, uh, the standard platform, um, it's just called the Big Shot platform, it comes with a thin die adapter. This is the ones that are shipping with the new Big Shots that are being sent out. Um, previously, when you had a Big Shot, you were getting these ones. Um, the multi-purpose platform, which has got the hinged side, and you've got platform uh, one and two, okay, and you open it um, completely and just have the basic platform. All right, so a couple of different ways. You may need to experiment. Every Big Shot's a little bit different um, to see how it goes through best for yours. However, I'm using the thin die adapter today. I'll need to take off my thin die adapter. So I don't want to use that. I'm just using the Big Shot platform by itself. So I'm taking off that layer. If you're using the multi-purpose platform, you'll be opening it up, okay? All right, then I normally would put a cutting plate on the bottom, but I'm not going to. I'm actually going to not use one of my plates. Instead, I'm going to get my um, embossing folder, and I'm just going to go with a piece of crumb cake cardstock that I've cut to size. Um, decide whether you want your, um, your cable knit to go across or whether you'd like it to go up and down. I'll get mine to go up and down. It's completely up to you depends on the look you're trying to get, pop that through and then I do put a cutting plate on top. Alright, so just need to make sure because it's a full 6 inches wide, you need to make sure that it actually doesn't extend over the edge of your platform and pop that through. So we're only using one platform. The reason why is because the um, embossing folder is so much thicker, it actually takes up a whole plate's worth of um, extra space so you don't need to use it. Okay, and then we have our image just like that. Okay. Looks great, just like that, fabulous. But I'm going to show you a couple of other ways that you can get a, a, an even deeper impression. Um, one way is simply by spritzing your paper um, with water. So I've just got a little a, um, a little stamp and spritzer here. Just make sure that your nozzle is facing the paper and not facing you. When you when, that might sound funny, but um, I'm just going to very lightly. You don't want to drench it. You just want to give it a light spritzing. Oops, you can see where my finger was. I'll just spray there as well. All right, and then pop that into the folder and we should be able to see the difference once again no adapter just the plate the platform then the die with the paper and then the cutting plate on top so only one cutting plate so we're following that same basic sandwich each time we use this and you'll feel you can feel it going through but it's it's quite an easy um, an easy way to use this okay now it's a little probably hard to see in the video but I can certainly see uh, running my finger over this that this is not as deeply etched as this one. This one is much more more deep and the, the rised, the risen pieces of the pattern are certainly more more risen and the, 
the recessed parts are more recessed so that has worked you would also obviously need to wait for that to um to uh, dry before I would go ahead and use it on my card it wouldn't take long you know and um, you could always pop a hairdryer onto it or something if you like even a heat tool but be careful you don't burn it all right I'm just gonna move that out of the way um, so the third way is by actually applying some color over the top of your of, of your piece of paper so you could go with the same color ink as paper that will work really really well in fact this is the finished one here I use sweet sugar plum uh, ink Bray it over the top. You could also sponge if you don't have a brayer. I think the brayers are fantastic for this, but um, you can use a sponge very lightly over the top if you wish, if you're very careful. Um, I've used sweet sugar plum ink on sweet sugar plum paper, and you can see how it's picked up the ink more on one side. When you're going from one direction, um, you will find that it, it does a really great job of, um, of applying the ink just where you want. So it almost creates a, a further shadow here and makes it look really 3D as well. I'm actually going to go up a shade today. So first of all, I'm, I'll emboss. So exactly as we did before, this time I'm not spritzing. I'm just putting it through dry. Bring it back in. Could have just left it here, couldn't I? Roll it through. got our piece here. okay so this is like the first piece we did just just as is I'm actually going to use soft suede ink which is a shade darker than the crumb cake that is on my um, my base and you'll see that the um, image comes up quite strongly it's up to you whether you go lengthways across I actually go diagonally I think it picks up quite well if I do it this way and it's quick and easy to do and by applying even pressure with my brayer, there's some pieces pick up light and some places stay with the darker, the darker tone. Just go as much as you would like to. Okay, so hopefully you can see. So this is the one that we spritz with water, which is quite deep. This one is also deep, but you've got more shadows that have been created by the additional color that I've applied. And this one is just the first one that I did flat. So it might be a little hard to see the difference between these two, but you certainly can see the difference with this one with the colour that's been applied. Okay, so like I said, I've applied colour here to this one, the Sweet Sugar Plum ink over the Sweet Sugar Plum cardstock. I added, um, added a sentiment and a few sequins and a little bit of bling underneath here um, and some, some metallic thread as well. So um, that one came out really pretty. This would be great for a cold weather Christmas. I've got... Um, family over in the US and I'm thinking that might be a nice card for them all right I want to show you now a little sneak peek from the upcoming um, uh, the upcoming occasions catalog that comes out January 4 this is another dynamic folder this one is the hexagon dynamic folder and um, I'm going to use it um, on some foil once again you can use it on paper you can use any of these with the foil but I love the way the foil creates more shadow because of the shine appearing on some pieces and not on others so I'm going to do this with this piece of silver and I'm just going to pop it through there we go bring my big shot back in my plate my folder my cutting pad just always remember you'll know if you try to use two cutting pads it won't go through it's going to be such a tight squeeze you'll be worried about hurting your big shot so um, you won't make that mistake all right all right so hopefully you can see how awesome this is it really creates a lovely deep effect so it's the, just the blank white paper on the back but isn't that beautiful and it picks up the shadows where the light is hitting it um, I think that looks fantastic here. I've used that, that exact thing here on a card. I've used it. This is another sneak peek for you from the upcoming catalogue. I've used some, this paper is called um, Urban Underground um, with the Dijon and the black and the silver and the vanilla. And I've also used some of the silver um, that I like, the one I just cut, and a couple of our new um, Build It framelits to cut out the, um, the tools. In this stamp set that's also coming your way this is a great masculine card I think texture and metallic looks 
on a on a mail card just looks so fantastic so if i was going to be applying this i could use uh, fuse or tape to pop on this piece just going to apply it here this is probably the beginnings of a card that will be on my blog over the next little while look out for it and this is a little bit of the urban underground paper which I'll probably pop in here and that's the beginnings of another mail card that I think will look really lovely so that's all I have for you today I just wanted to show you how to use these dynamic embossing folders and why they are different um, to the ones that we have currently um, there's a couple of examples for you of how you might use them this one from the current holiday catalog and this one from the upcoming holiday uh, sorry occasions catalog release in January um, both of them will look absolutely fantastic on your cards enjoy and I'll be back soon tomorrow's day five guys check back in to see what is on the agenda next bye